Genesis 23 narrates the death of Sarah, Abraham's wife, and Abraham's efforts to secure a burial place for her. Before we start we'd like to ask for your support. If you enjoy our video please hit the like button this will help us reach more people and create content for you. Now let's get started with today's video. Genesis 23 is a critical passage in the Bible as it marks the death of Sarah, the wife of Abraham, and the acquisition of a burial place for her. This chapter, though short, has profound theological and historical significance in the narrative of Abraham and his descendants. It illustrates themes of mortality, legacy, property rights, and the covenant promises of God, all while showcasing the respectful and honorable character of Abraham in his dealings with others. Sarah's Death, Genesis 23 verses 1 to 2. The chapter opens with the statement that Sarah lived for 127 years, emphasizing the fullness of her life. Sarah was not only Abraham's wife but also the matriarch of the Israelite people, the mother of Isaac, the promised son through whom God's covenant with Abraham would be fulfilled. Sarah's death occurred in Kiriath Arba, which is Hebron, in the land of Canaan, a key location in the biblical narrative, as it would later become part of the promised land for Abraham's descendants. Verse 1, Sarah lived 127 years, these were the years of the life of Sarah. This verse highlights the longevity of Sarah's life. In biblical times, such extended lifespans were often seen as a sign of blessing and favor from God. Sarah's life was filled with significant events, from her journey with Abraham to leave their homeland to her miraculous conception of Isaac at an old age. Her life exemplifies a walk of faith alongside her husband Abraham, enduring trials, periods of doubt, and eventually witnessing the fulfillment of God's promise of a son. Verse 2, And Sarah died at Kiriath Arba, that is, Hebron, in the land of Canaan, and Abraham went in to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her. Sarah's death in Canaan is notable because it signifies that Abraham and Sarah had spent many years living in the land that God had promised to them and their descendants. Abraham's mourning for Sarah is described in simple yet poignant terms. It shows his deep love for her and the personal loss he felt. Despite being known as a man of great faith and the father of many nations, Abraham is depicted here in a very human way, grieving the loss of his life partner. Mourning and weeping were customary expressions of grief in ancient Near Eastern cultures, showing Abraham's respect for his wife and her significance in his life. Abraham seeks a burial place for Sarah, Genesis 23 verses 3 to 9. Following Sarah's death, Abraham takes steps to secure a proper burial place for her. Since he is a sojourner and a foreigner in the land of Canaan, he does not own any land. His request to the Hittites for a burial plot shows his humility and his desire to do right by Sarah. Verse 3, And Abraham rose up from before his dead and said to the Hittites. Abraham is described as rising up from before his dead, indicating that he had spent time in mourning and now felt the responsibility to act. His attention now shifts from grieving to making practical arrangements for Sarah's burial. The Hittites, also called the sons of hate, were the people living in the land at that time. Verse 4, I am a sojourner and foreigner among you, give me property among you for a burying place, that I may bury my dead out of my sight. Abraham refers to himself as a sojourner and foreigner, acknowledging his lack of ownership in the land. Even though God had promised the land of Canaan to him and his descendants, he had not yet taken possession of it. This humility is noteworthy, as Abraham, a man of great wealth and influence, 
does not presume to take land by force or expect it as a gift based on his covenant with God. Instead, he seeks to lawfully purchase property for Sarah's burial. Verse 5 to 6, The Hittites answered Abraham, Hear us, my lord, you are a prince of God among us. Bury your dead in the choicest of our tombs. None of us will withhold from you his tomb to hinder you from burying your dead. The response of the Hittites is one of deep respect. They recognize Abraham as a prince of God, acknowledging his status and perhaps his special relationship with the divine. They offer him the choice of their best tombs for Sarah's burial, signaling both their admiration for him and their willingness to accommodate his request without hesitation. Verse 7 Abraham rose and bowed to the Hittites, the people of the land. Abraham's bowing before the people shows his respect and gratitude. It is an important gesture, considering that Abraham, despite being highly honored, remains humble in his dealings with others. Verse 8 to 9, And he said to them, If you are willing that I should bury my dead out of my sight, hear me and entreat for me Ephron the son of Zohar, that he may give me the cave of Machpelah, which he owns, it is at the end of his field. For the full price let him give it to me in your presence as property for a burying place. Abraham specifically requests the cave of Machpelah, a burial site he desires, and insists on paying the full price for it. This is significant because Abraham does not want to be seen as taking advantage of the Hittites' generosity. He wants to acquire the land in a way that establishes clear ownership ensuring that Sarah's resting place will remain with his family. By insisting on paying the full price, Abraham ensures that there will be no future disputes or misunderstandings about the land. The negotiation with Ephron, Genesis 23 verses 10 to 16. Abraham's request is met with favor, but the negotiation continues, reflecting the customs of the time. The passage details the back and forth between Abraham and Ephron, which is typical of the Near Eastern bargaining culture. Verse 10 to 11, Now Ephron was sitting among the Hittites, and Ephron the Hittite answered Abraham in the hearing of the Hittites, of all who went in at the gate of his city, No, my lord, hear me, I give you the field, and I give you the cave that is in it. In the sight of the sons of my people I give it to you. Bury your dead. Ephron offers both the field and the cave as a gift to Abraham. This offer may seem generous, but it is part of the negotiation process common in the ancient Near East, where such offers were expected to be refused as part of the formalities. Verse 12 to 13, Then Abraham bowed down before the people of the land. And he said to Ephron in the hearing of the people of the land, But if you will, hear me, I will give the price of the field. Accept it from me, that I may bury my dead there. Abraham refuses the gift and reiterates his desire to pay the full price for the field and the cave. His insistence reflects his desire to legally own the land and avoid any future claims or disputes. Verse 14 to 15, Ephron answered Abraham, My lord, listen to me, a piece of land worth four hundred shekels of silver, what is that between you and me? Bury your dead. Ephron finally names a price, four hundred shekels of silver, while maintaining a polite tone that suggests the price is insignificant in comparison to their friendship. The amount is quite high, suggesting that Ephron is aware of Abraham's wealth and ability to pay. Verse 16, Abraham listened to Ephron, and Abraham weighed out for Ephron the silver that he had named in the hearing of the Hittites, 400 shekels of silver, according to the weights current among the merchants. Abraham immediately agrees to the price and weighs out the silver, thus completing the transaction. This act of weighing silver was a standard method of payment in those times, and by doing this in the presence of witnesses, 
Abraham ensures that the purchase is legally binding. The burial of Sarah, Genesis 23 verses 17 to 20. The chapter concludes with the formal acquisition of the field and the cave, followed by the burial of Sarah. This moment is significant as it represents the first piece of the promised land that Abraham legally owns. Verse 17 to 18, so the field of Ephron in Machpelah, which was to the east of Mamre, the field with the cave that was in it and all the trees that were in the field throughout its whole area, was made over to Abraham as a possession in the presence of the Hittites before all who went in at the gate of his city. The text emphasizes the legal transfer of the land, detailing not only the cave but also the field and its trees. This indicates that Abraham has secured a permanent, undisputed possession in the land of Canaan. The transaction is witnessed by the Hittites, ensuring that the deed is publicly recognized. Verse 19, After this, Abraham buried Sarah his wife in the cave of the field of Machpelah east of Mamre, that is, Hebron, in the land of Canaan. Finally, Sarah is laid to rest in the cave of Machpelah, marking the completion of the burial arrangements. This cave would later become the burial place for Abraham himself, as well as for other patriarchs and matri. Please subscribe my YouTube channel I hope you like this video thank you.